Hello everyone, in today's video, we'll be going through how to make your inbound AI assistant smarter and more efficient by enabling it access to past user conversations and details before the call even begins. So we'll be utilizing an inbound transient assistant whereby instead of making a tool call at the start or during the conversation, our assistant can instantly preload any past user details, including past orders, service requests, or any information that we may need to make the inbound call more personalized to the user calling in. And we'll break down exactly how this works from the assistant's core capabilities to making any database queries to preload information or any other user interactions that we can utilize to make the inbound call much better. Let's jump in. Now, before we dive into actually building our inbound assistant, let's just take a step back to a visualization of how this works. It's helpful to understand not only the differences between inbound and outbound calls, but also what's sort of happening under the hood between your server, your VAP, and the caller. Now, for inbound, typically the trigger is when we receive a call to which those call details, including the number, is connected to the VAP server. And typically, if you have an assistant connected to an inbound number on your VAP, an assistant will be sent back to that caller to which the conversation will start. Now, in this sense, we cannot load any dynamic variables or any customer details within that assistant configuration, making it much harder to personalize that inbound call than if we were to send a specific assistant configuration preloaded with that inbound caller's details, which is what we are achieving today. Now, before I jump into this side, we'll just quickly go over outbounds. Now, the trigger here is wherever we specify in our server. Typically, this may be when a new record comes into our database or whenever we initialize or start our scenario where our assistance spec is sent in an API request in our JSON payload to which the assistant is sent into VAP and VAP sends that to the caller. This way, it's easier to preload customer details before the call's even made. And on the flip side of that, after the call is done, some core details will be sent back to VAP, to which VAP will send that to our server. Now, what many people don't know is that we can actually utilize a transient-based assistant for inbound calls. If we don't have an assistant specified to our number, when we make a call to that number, VAP needs to look for what assistant to use. And in that sense, VAP actually sends an assistant request to our organization level server URL to which we can then in our webhook response send an assistant configuration back to VAP to which that sends to the caller. So in this sense, we are now able to create a much more dynamic inbound assistant. What it typically looks like is VAP will send an assistant request to our make server or any other server URL to which before our response, we may want to include some logic to query a database based on the user's number as the unique identifier and also retrieve any caller details. In our response, we can specify our assistant, including any fields or context that we have retrieved from a database query or anything like that. Now that's enough fancy images that don't mean a whole lot, but let's get into step-by-step -step how to build a dynamic or transient inbound assistant for yourself. Now, the first thing we want to do is set up an endpoint on our server, e.g. make for VAP to connect with. This endpoint will receive our assistant request message to which we can perform some logic before we send an assistant configuration back. To do that, we'll add a webhook and We'll make a simple custom webhook. We'll choose a hook or we can add one. 
we'll do vapey for example and this will give us a unique make or server url endpoint that we can put into vapey to which our assistant request will be sent here if we copy address to clipboard and head over to vapey under your settings you'll see something called server url this is an organization level server url to which vapey will send those assistant requests to this server url only when an inbound number hasn't been assigned an assistant now what i mean by that is when you import a new number either from twilio or vonage we have some inbound settings down here now typically when people create an inbound assistant they'll assign that assistant to the corresponding inbound number if you're wanting to do a transient based inbound assistant to not assign any assistant to that inbound number. We can go back to our organization settings and look for server URL. And what we wanna do here is input our new server URL that we've collected from our make custom webhook in here. Now, what we can do is if we called into that number and we ran that webhook, you'll see an assistant request getting sent to our webhook. So if I go down here and run this module only, you'll see it's waiting for some data. Now, if I call into this number, we'll have an assistant request sent to our server. So I just called in and you'll see we received an assistant request. Our assistant request includes some collections, including the call ID when it was created, the type, as well as customer details, which is going to be very important for today's tutorial, phone number details, and again, customer details. Now, when I called in, we haven't specified the assistant spec to use on that phone number, so the call didn't dial in. But regardless, we now have our assistant request coming to our webhook here. Now, the next steps here would be to I guess create a webhook response to actually send back a payload or assistant configuration back to VAPI so we can connect to an actual assistant. So what we can do now is head down to webhooks and we'll click webhook response. This is going to be what we're sending back to VAPI server. And in the body here, it is where we are including our assistant configuration or transient assistant to which Vapey will use to connect to that caller. Now for now, I'll paste in a basic assistant configuration that we'll use for today. And what we can do is hit okay. Now, if we were to call back in to this assistant on that number that caller will be connected to and therefore start conversing with Ryan's assistant. Let's quickly run this to confirm that our assistant config is being sent to the inbound user and we'll hit run. So I'll call in. Hey Ryan, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you for asking. How can I assist you today? Now what we can do is in between these two modules, we can start to add some additional logic and build upon our transient assistant. Almost all of the time, a customer will call in with an available number to use as our identifier to query a database or a CRM. But what happens if we cannot find that user number or it's a new user that we don't have their number already existing in our system. In this case, we wanna have two routes we can take with this configuration. And the first one will be to check if the number exists. And if it does, then we'll preload some customer details into the assistant configuration. And the second being if that customer doesn't exist, continue as normal with a normal assistant configuration. Now, in this example for today, I'm going to be using a basic Google Sheets where I have customer's number, first, last name, and their last user interaction stored. And in this case, the last user interaction with that particular number 
was that we were looking for iPhones and the user wasn't too sure. Now, in this case, considering our Google Sheets is our database to a sense, we'll need to filter out leads that exist in the database and leads that do not. So what we can do now is we'll add a router, connect that here and delete that and We'll unlink this one and link it here. The first route we are going to take is if the user number from our assistant request actually exists. So number exists. If the number exists, then we can query a database. Because our number is acting as the unique identifier in this case, it has to exist for us to perform a request to search our Google Sheets rows. So if the customer number exists, then it can go down this path. From here, we'll add a module, Google Sheets, search rows advanced, we'll connect to our account and we'll locate into our spreadsheet here. I've spelt it wrong, how fun. The sheet ID, which is sheet one, and we'll want to do a query. And how we want to do this is we want to retrieve those rows that correspond with the unique identifier, e.g. that number. So we can do a basic query, select where, and we need to specify the column name, and we want to use our unique identifier as A. So the column name is equal to the customer number here. Now, if I run this scenario and call from the number that already exists in our database, you'll see it will search the rows and return the values in that row. So I'll hit run. Hey Ryan, how are you? So we called in and you'll see our output bundle includes all the information that was in our database. So before the call even started, we have queried a database to this unique identifier to return its appropriate values. Now what we can do here is we can use some of these fields to personalize our inbound assistant. So we might want to include the name in the first message as well as the last interaction as additional context so that the inbound assistant knows where it left off. To do that, we can now use some of these variables within our first message. So instead of, hey, Ryan, we'll use, hey, John, how are you? And in the system content, you are Ryan's assistant. We might change this to, you are an assistant. Helping users pick a phone for context. This was the last user's interaction. This context, this was the last user's interaction. And we'll need to make sure that this is getting passed as appropriate JSON. We'll put those in brackets. Hit OK. Now, if we were to run this now, the last user interaction will be included as context in our assistant configuration. And therefore, it'll be a much more personalized experience. We'll call in now. Hey, John, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Have you had a chance to discuss the iPhone options with your wife? Do you have any further questions about the iPhone models? Yeah, I wanna go ahead with the iPhone 15. Great choice. The iPhone 15 is a fantastic option. Perfect. Now, as you could have heard, it followed up on our last user interaction, which is extremely helpful to creating a much more effective customer support experience. Now that we've got our inbound assistant retrieving relevant customer details, if they exist in our database, we need to explore the second route which if a customer doesn't exist, we need to return an assistant that is applicable to a non-existent customer. The assistant we would like to send to a customer whom doesn't exist in our database is gonna be the same as what we have here in terms of the structure and composition, only we're not gonna be passing in these variables to add a personal touch we merely want to go the same, only it's more general. It takes a more general approach 
where we can collect the customer details through an end of call report and then store it that way. So to do that, we're gonna clone this and we're actually gonna add another router. There's a lot of routers going on here and we'll add the second one here. So essentially we want the first route to be taken if that customer exists. And the reason why we have two router here is because this is checking if the inbound call number exists the second one is going to be if that customer actually exists or it doesn't. So in that sense, we'll have another route off this that handles a no caller ID or anything of that nature. But for now, we want our first route to be taken if that customer exists. So again, we're gonna be doing a second filter similar to the one we've had here. And again, we can do the same number exists and for the second path, it'll be the same. Number does not exist. That means that if we have customer details already, it's going to go into our initial webhook response where we're passing in variable data to make it a more personalized call. And the second path, if they do not exist, will make it more general without that additional context. And I know this is very basic assistant. Yours may look entirely different and a bit more fleshed out with different dynamics, first message, voicemail, etc. But for now, we're keeping it simple and straightforward. So if we hit OK with that, and we'll actually clone this again, and we'll add it here as well. Okay, so to explain this once more, we are calling into a number that we're gonna have an assistant on. Vapey sends an assistant request to make our server. And if the number is included in our output bundle here, we'll search the rows. If the number exists in our database, we'll preload with some information. If the number doesn't exist, we'll continue with a normal assistant. And if the number didn't exist in the initial output, we'll go ahead with a normal assistant also. Now, if we save this and head back over to our Google Sheets, if I change this number to a random number and I call in, e.g. with a number that's not existing in our database, this should go down our second route here with a more general assistant. So we'll run this. And now if I call in, my number won't exist in the database, so it'll go down this second path. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Okay, as you saw, it went down the second path. It also went down here because we do not have a filter. So we can set something up and same thing here, customer number does not exist. Run it again. Call in. Hey, how are you? Cool, so there you have it. The smarter, more efficient approach to inbound assistance. Now this is only the start of how you might map out your inbound assistant overall. You may wanna to start to bring in tool calls, mid call for booking appointments and things like that. But starting from this scaffold, you're going to have a much more friendly and more inviting user experience with your inbound agents. From here, if we wanna add an end of call report to update our records, we can do so. And if you don't know how to do so, I have plenty of other videos explaining full walkthroughs of how to use VP for outbound and inbound. So do check those out. But for today, I wanted to get through this material, specifically creating those inbound transient assistants that offer much more dynamic conversations with addressing past user conversations and bringing in customer details as context into the call to again, make them a much more inviting and friendly user experience. Anyway, that is it for today. I hope you all enjoyed and found it interesting. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I try to reply to everyone, but that's it for today. Again, this is a really effective solution to making your inbound assistance much more powerful. Again, if you're looking to stay ahead of the AI curve, be sure to subscribe, I upload weekly. Until next week.